We need music. <laughs> we do need music. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, so hopefully someone comes on. There we go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 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 So I just posted about something coming up that's really fun and going to be amazing and challenging and you get to learn mm -hmm. all the things. And so we, doctors of physical therapy, <laughs> um, are here to answer your questions and tell you why you should join us in the free challenge that starts September 18th. September 18th. So I'm going to put the link up right here. You can tap it at any time, but also you can ask us questions. So feel free to ask questions. Any questions about the body, about breath work, about mindset, about pain, about food, because he's here with me and he cooks all my meals. Mm -hmm. This is true. Favorite way to release upper, upper traps? Um, my favorite way is through breath work, to yeah. be honest. What's your favorite way? I mean, breath work is great because it's something that I can do on my own. I do love having somebody do some manual work on me. So if I can ever get my personal doctor of physical therapy to do some work on my neck, that's great. I know that Jen has a lot of great videos for upper neck release and trap releases you can do on your own so otherwise i'd probably go look at some of those because i love using those tools that i can do on my own like a foam roller or whatever to then yeah get into my breath and relax i mean a bit. you can use um so the tools that i use in particular um and that we have around the house the entally roll which is amazing because it has that spine zone so it's something that you can easily roll up onto for the upper traps same with the yoga tune-up balls. So if you take those two therapy balls, you can put them right up here and actually create like a bridge through your, um, through your hips and lift your arms and kind of let them float in the air like a zombie. Actually like, but the key to any kind of release is actually relax. So if you can breathe through any kind of massage treatment, I don't care if it's a hypervolt that's on your shoulders or whatever it may be, like if you can breathe while you're releasing, that is the best thing. Because we're not actually releasing, we're actually relaxing the tension through that tissue. So mm -hmm. um, let's ask, answer some more questions. And the amazing thing too, is that releasing stress from the neck area that all goes into breath work. So a lot of the things that we talk about with breath work, like there's so many different types of breath work, why breath work, all that kind of stuff. But the key is like programming your breath with the intention of the movement. So whether that is breath work into a heavy activity that you wanna kind of like amplify or whether it's breath work into mobility where you really want to get that relaxation. So it depends on what the goal is and I teach this a lot, especially in the free challenge. Like the free challenge is all about education. So it's education in terms of learning not only how to do the movement properly and progress and, and modify or whatever it may be, but also why you would do the movement. What, like how it becomes more effective and efficient within your body. That's the key. Key is efficiency and effectiveness, not necessarily like what is the right and wrong way, but what is the goal and the intention of the exercise? So it's gonna be a bunch of like functional HIIT workouts, which you do with me all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, core stability workouts and mobility flows, which again, we do together quite often. Mm -hmm. It is great because it's the things that we do every day and it just teaches you more about how your body feels when you do different movements. So yeah. join us. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of questions come through, so let me see if I can answer some of those. Um, whoa, lots of questions, lots of questions. Okay, calm, slow down a little bit, a little bit. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Best advice for getting confidence back after a PT clears you from ACL Ooh. reconstruction. Confident. That's a fun one. Yeah, you want to go with that one? Um, so when we have injuries like an ACL reconstruction, it just makes our knee a little less sure about what it's doing when we land and when we use it and when we go through certain movements. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing about after we have an injury like an ACL reconstruction is doing those movements that force our knee 
to compensate for us, like using unstable surfaces, doing a lot of standing on foam pads, jumping onto a single knee and making sure that your knee tracks well, because then once you get into a game, it's about making those automatic movements. We need to train under a more controlled environment and make sure we can do cuts and jumps and stuff on that knee to gain confidence. And then we need to start throwing in distractions so our mind gets used to doing those jumping yeah. and landing and doing those movements with distraction like we would in a game. So it's about training that patterning of the knee again in all of those uneasy situations so that when we get into a game, our mind and our knees say, hey, this movement's safe. Yeah. It's not where we're going to have that injury like it remembers because our tissues are really smart. So they remember when we have those yeah. types of injuries. We literally get things called neuro tags within our mind that remind us and like it your knee will go weak because it's a response of like a fear. So way to gain confidence is everything he said, you know, and just be very cognizant. It all goes together. So be, it's just like being aware. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, having the mental awareness and then doing that, you having that awareness and mindfulness while you do the physical activities yes. and know what you're training for. You're training to do really high level, really aggressive, explosive stuff during a lot of distraction, so train for that. <clears throat> okay, someone asked, is, is weightlifting or HIIT safe to do first thing in the AM without eating? Um, yes, that's what we do. <laughs> um, it really is. Um, we will sometimes just have water in the morning or water and coffee mm -hmm. um, and go do our really sweaty HIIT workout or a really sweaty lift. Um, so both safe to do, just like fasted cardio kind of thing. Um, but you also need to listen to your body. So if you're not even used to not eating in the morning, then I wouldn't then be doing a heavy workout on top of that. So you definitely need to be mindful of what you are typically doing. I typically don't eat in the morning. He typically doesn't eat in the morning. So this, our body is already used to being active, using energy. And so being able to do a workout in that state is, mm -hmm. is common for us. If you're not used to it, try not eating in the morning and seeing how you feel. Um, or try going for a walk or kind of building it up and seeing what your tolerance is within your body. Um, <clears throat> weak neck muscles, poor posture, rounded shoulders. So it's not just about alignment like physically as to what exactly needs to be stretched and worked and all these things. but Honestly, like even up here, nothing gets started unless we're really mentally focused within it, unless we're using our feet properly, unless we're breathing and stacking our three diaphragms, which comes from our neck, our rib cage with our real di respiratory diaphragm, and then our pelvic floor diaphragm. So these three need to be aligned. We need to be figuring out how that we're using our feet, utilizing our feet, utilizing our pressure systems within the diaphragms, and then how are we talking to our bodies, responding to the reactions in the environment around us. Like it all goes together, and that's why, again, within the free challenge, we go through all of the things I'm talking about and I'm adding mindset tools into it as well so that you can really be working every day. What is the first three things you do every morning? I wake up, I write in my daily journal after I do my breath work, and during my breath work I send out some gratitudes. So I mean my things are getting my breath moving to prime the system, write down some gratitude so I know what is good to live for in this world, and then I like doing a little bit of movement so I get my body moving. So, so I'll be sending you out some tools and tricks easy quick ways that you can start to implement what does mindset mean in the body how is that related to the body and how does that respond to pain aches and alignment um, so we'll be going through all of that within the free challenge so check it out mm -hmm. um, <laughs> is that a good screenshot does someone get that <laughs> um Okay, I really like this one. How do you, because this kind of goes into the mindset one. I love how you always post about not just finding happiness in a significant other, but finding it within yourself first. Um, and how can you start to find that within yourself and stay confident? And I always talk about this too, like integrity within you and what you're doing internally will relate to it, integrity out into the world. So how are you taking care of yourself? 
Are you keeping your promises to yourself? If you sign up for a free challenge, are you actually doing the challenge? Are you committing to the things that you say to yourself that you want to do? Because then that's going to relate to how we respond to a partner, how we, we, you know, how we respond to professional life, to our jobs, to anything else. So it's like, again, if you want to start learning how to come back into yourself, I'm going to help with ways that you can start to just ease into it. So the challenge will have things related to mindset, relating to movement, the core, mobility, strength, functional HIIT workouts. What does functional mean? It means that it can relate and take you into your everyday life. Um, yes, so it starts with finding integrity here. Um, is it bad that I squat with wide stance? I feel like my hips are so tight that I can't squat right. Ooh, what is right? What is wrong? I don't know. Do mm. you squat right? I think I squat right. I squat right. Yeah, you squat right? And so. I squat with a fairly wide stance. <laughs> oh. Yes. And as any good PT would say during most questions, it depends. It is it okay if I squat with a wide stance? It depends. Are you squatting with a wide stance because you're compensating for the tight hips or tight ankles. Mine is because I have tight ankles. So I like to stand with my stance slightly wider. I also, your squat stance will depend on your, your hip anatomy. Everyone has yeah. slightly different hip anatomy, which can make some of us feel much more comfortable squatting with a wide stance. In that case, then I say, yes, it's very much so okay. If you're doing it to compensate for other places you could move a little better, then maybe we just work on moving those other places a little better and then squatting with slightly more optimal stands, so. It depends, but do you want a quick trick of how to find your squat stance? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you guys a quick trick. Okay, I'm just gonna move us for a moment over this way, so hopefully you can still see. Welcome to my PJs. Um, <laughs> okay, so quick way to find your, I look huge in these pants. Um, <laughs> okay, but if you just jump, and land, wherever you land, and however wide your feet go, that's your squat. Or, and so that I would come up and do a good squat. Right in here, where I drop below parallel, and I'm not getting the butt weight. Okay, so that's a good way. Another way to figure out your squat stance is to walk in a duck stance. So if I start walking in a duck stance like this, and I walk a few times, see where my feet land naturally, how wide do they go, how apart do they go, how narrow can they go. So wherever that is comfortable for me is then my squat. Okay, quick little tip. Tell your friends. And we're back. I don't know how, learning something new every day. <laughs> okay, so hopefully as you guys like that one. Um, best for low back pain. It depends. It depends. And so you have to learn about your body. You have to learn what could be restricted, what could not be moving well, what could not be programming well within your body. What are you telling yourself all throughout the day? Blah, blah, blah. It depends. So join the free challenge and learn tips like that. Uh, what diet do you follow? Babe, what diet do we follow? You cook for me. I don't know. <laughs> I always, that's one of my favorite questions. What do all the fad diets do? They take out processed stuff, they take out sugars, they take out refined grains, um, and they focus on the whole-based foods that give you high amounts of nutrients compared to the amounts of calories that are in the food. So the whole real food, delicious food diet, that is the diet that we are on. And whole we let ourselves foods. have some fun when it comes to eating as long as we do it in moderation. Like, like this. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, oh, I felt like I was going to add. Oh, but we are, we have cleared out a lot of things that are not organic anymore. Yeah. So we mostly stick to all organic foods mm -hmm. and definitely whole real foods is what we eat around here. No doubt. Oh, oh dirt. yeah. Oh, dirt. Oh, dirt. <laughs> Um, pelvic imbalance. Okay, so <sighs> pelvic imbalances. So we don't walk from our pelvis typically. Um, 
I have a friend who does, she's kind of amazing. She does a lot of acrobatic stuff. Jen Bricker, shout out. Um, but most of us walk from our feet. So I like to go back to how are your feet? Like, because if you have one dropping in, imagine what that's going to do up the chain. And, you know, that starts to happen. <laughs> so I used to be the therapist too, who was like, oh, let me see what's happening here. Oh, let's do a little pelvic met. Oh, well, oh, better. Um, until I realized that wasn't really doing that much. That's exactly what you used to do? That's Just exactly, like that. that's like how that. I would talk to my clients and everything. Um, yeah, I don't really do that anymore. It's a quick fix. It is not the solution. Your thoughts? The pelvic imbalance is one side higher than the other, is one leg longer than the other. Maybe. Um, is that what's causing the symptoms? Is that what's making the pelvis or the low back hurt? Uh, I think we need to dig a little deeper. So it's a whole package, a whole picture thing. Yes, what are the feet doing? How are you breathing? How are you supporting through that core? Um, find somebody who's going to look at you as a whole person. Have them take a look at you and how you move and maybe yeah. what things throughout the body could help that pelvic imbalance. Yeah. Um, pins and needles in the right heel, especially when you're standing. That sounds like it's radiating pain from a nerve. Might not be, maybe not, but pins and needles, numbness, tingling, mm -hmm. burning, mm -hmm. weakness, yeah. it could all be related to a nerve. And nerve stuff is means that it's radiating from a different origin. So my recommendation is definitely drop in, see your doctor of physical therapy, um, and they will do some neural tensioning stuff that is needed for your individual body, which my challenge nor my program will go over because it's very specific. Your nerves are delicate. They should be treated with care and go to see your doctor of physical therapy. One of us, one of us. Um, uh, Okay, uh, let's see. Anything light during pregnancy on full bed rest? Ooh, breathing, breathing. Unless you've had someone tell you you can't breathe yet. Again, <laughs> that's tough because I would go to the provider who said that you should be on bed rest. And it's well, not it something. depends, pregnancy is. True, Yeah. but breathing and. But breathing for sure. And then, you know, you're gonna have to get out of bed and go to the bathroom doing stuff like that. So can you do a little bit of like sit to stand even on the bed? Can you do some like at the edge of the bed, extending one leg, then the other? Um, you know, you can do like little tiny things like that. I personally would say talk to your, um, talk to your MD who requested and, and ask if you want a little bit more and see what the guidelines would be. And you can also go see a pelvic floor specialist and see what they would recommend for you. Um, hello, hello. How do you access the challenge? I love that question. That's a stupid question. You can go to the link in the bio or you can screenshot right here. And this link right at the bottom, docgenfit.com slash SMF 2019. That's on... That stands for strong, mobile, <laughs> free. That ought to draw them in. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna do the challenge with me, babe? Of course. Oh. Air, air day. Oh. Air day. Yay. Um, what books do you recommend on nutrition, PT, or inspiration? Whew. That's a loaded question. Um, he probably reads more than I do. Um, inspiration books. I really like books like Start With Why. That's a good one. The Four Agreements. Mm, that's a great one. Love is Letting Go of Fear. They're all books that just talk to us about how we use our minds while we live this life. You Are a Badass. I really like that you one. You Are a Badass is really good. Earth is Hiring by Peta Kelly. Girl, Wash Your Face. Yep. Rachel Hollis. So any of those books that are good at just sending you a good message that you can you're better than you even give yourself credit for. You are a badass. Yeah. Just look for one of those. PT? Well, I mean, 
if you want to learn more about training and stuff like that, honestly, hire a personal trainer. They're going to, they can take you through a lot of what the body does and corrective exercises and get you to just understand your body better. Or yeah. go see a physical therapist. Go get evaluated. I have clients that pop in once a month, once every six months, and just to like be like, hey, what's up with my body? What what new things do I should I be looking at? Should I be assessing? So those are always like great ways to just start to learn and increase your awareness. Another great way to increase awareness: join the free challenge. Join the free challenge. Join the free challenge. Because it will help. Um, and then nutrition. The, I mean, rabbit holes of nutrition. Mm -hmm. There are so many different thoughts and ideas and things. So my recommendation is listen to this. This one body that you have will tell you a lot. If you do elimination diets and you start to add little things back in, little bits at a time, like we've done Whole30 because we do eat meat and, um, sorry, just putting that out there. Um, and so, but if you then start like adding grains back in, adding like legumes back in, seeing how your body responds, adding dairy, seeing how your body responds, adding sugar, seeing that your body doesn't ever respond well to that. Um, just little things and then seeing how your body responds. Listening to this vessel that we have is like one of the greatest things. And then if you can go see a naturopath, functional medicine doctor, um, nutritionist, dietitian, they will do special tests. Um, oh, my mom was on. I wonder if she's still on. Hi, Ma. Um, I'm trying to like just scroll through. Should people do hit for cardio? Depends. It's one way. And it's a great way. It's a great way. I love it. 30 yeah. minutes, done. Totally. And a 30 minute, 20 minute HIIT workout does a lot more for your heart and gets you used to going through a lot of heart rate variability and variation in a short amount of time. So it's a lot better than doing a longer amount of just steady running. So again, it depends. What's your goal? Yeah. I just realized my screen changed because I put it on like the, you know, the night screen. The night screen. The night screen. And I was like, why did it get so orange? So orange? Why am I so orange? It's good for your eyes and gets me ready for bedtime. Um, who, what do you recommend someone who wants to start a routine? I don't know where to start. Free challenge. Free challenge. Free challenge. Free challenge. Yeah, sign up. Consistency. Small goals. Very small goal. Do that consistently. Then yeah. it'll grow. So start with the free five challenge. day free challenge. Um, good hip stretches. I mean, you can just click on my profile, take a gander. There's tons there. And we will be doing some of my favorites through the free challenge. So I'm so excited. What made you both become doctors? Um, for me, I really just like loved learning about the body and wanted, and like I became fascinated with watching how a physical therapist would watch movement or feel movement or like, and I would, I was a Pilates instructor as well, so I'd be like, you know, why am I modifying around movement? Like, how is this really like helping someone? How, what can I do more? And it was just like always this fascination with wanting to learn about the body. Um, and then I learned that you had to get your doctor of physical therapy to become a physical therapist. So I had to. And I guess for me, it was, again, the body, what Jen said, I've always been amazed by this machine that we have that adapts to what we do with it. So how amazing the body is. I knew that if I went into health, it'd be a lifelong journey of education. There's always more to learn. And then my third one is service. I feel like the people I work with, the education I put out, you're always serving the people you work with and for. So those have been kind of my three pillars of YPT. Uh, what can you do to combat extreme fatigue? If your labs have always been normal. See, okay, so here's the problem sometimes. I don't want to like say anything negative about an MD, mm -hmm. but sometimes um, they will say that something falls within the normal range, but it actually is like way on the lower end or way on the upper end or like actually needs to be balanced with some different hormones and different things. And that's why particularly I have loved people who think outside the box. Like, like we have our friend, shout out Dr. G, 
um, who like really looks at like what is even within your environment you have mold in different places like there's so many different factors that could be going on and then something that I always go back to again is how are you breathing because our breath literally changes our nervous system and can change the way that we respond to different situations especially with movement so if you want to learn my techniques into breathing and things that we do together join free challenge Uh, thoughts on CSCS or uh, SCS, SCS. Um, I don't have it. I don't have it. I think that getting those specialty certifications are great. Signed um, up. Yes. Sorry. Keep going. The SCS is the sports. Yeah. Yeah. That's for PTs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not like the CSCS though. The SCS. The S sports specialty. Sports. Yes. Certified sports. specialist. Yes. 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 I think it's great and I think it's depending on what your goal is and yes. if you want to be in the field of sports, you're yes. going to know a lot more about how to do PT for those in sports and I also do think that there's value in being able to work with the individual and the person too. So, specialties are great. Can you apply it to people? I think that's the more important part. Are there amazing PTs in sports that don't have that? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, certifications, honestly, especially as a as a PT, most of them, um, the people who are looking at those are the people who know about those, which is us. Mm -hmm. Typical population is not going to look at that or care. They're going to look at you as a provider and say, do you, can you help me? Do you have the confidence? Do you know what, what you have? Like, you can get all the letters behind your name. It doesn't make you a good provider. Mm -hmm. What makes you a good provider is really being able to connect with someone really looking at a person as a whole, knowing who you can refer out to when you can't take it all on by yourself um, so that you can continue to treat that whole person. And then, yeah, I mean, the one that, like pelvic floor specialist, that's something I would look for, uh, for sure, because that's like a lot of courses mm -hmm. you have to go through. Um, sports, it depends. Like, can you learn under someone who's amazing? I think you could without having to get that certification. So. Depends. If you want to go professionally, I would say, yeah. Okay, we're going to come off here pretty soon and enjoy El vino. this and this. Yeah. Um, recommend learning how to stay motivated. Just start. Lots of compassion for yourself, too. Like, if I don't get up every day and and do it, okay, why am I not? Don't beat myself up because that's not gonna help anything. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, what, what can I look at? Did I not get enough sleep? Is that what kept me you know, from going? Do I need an accountability partner to get me going at first? Like for me, um, I do. Like my friend Nicola comes over and if I know she's coming over, then I'm like, I gotta get up, I gotta get out, I gotta go work out, people are relying on me. So again, signing up for something that is gonna hold you accountable to like, hey look, and this is free, so it's not even holding you that accountable. I would say things that hold you more accountable are either paying for something or like having a friend show up or you have to show up with them. Um, stuff like that kind of holds you a little bit more, but this can be a start. It's an amazing start. So sh signing up for a free challenge, it's going to be brand new. A lot of people have done these types of challenges and I've gotten amazing feedback. Like, uh, it's all amazing. Um, and yeah, and then, and then suggesting your friends so that you can like, again, have that accountability. Be like, hey, did you do the challenge today? What did you think? And then you know like, hey, they're gonna ask me if I did the challenge, so let me make sure I did it. And it's like sticking to that accountability. Um, suggestions for piriformis syndrome. We can't necessarily just address the problem. So piriformis syndrome, just like a disc issue, just, just like rotator cuff syndrome, anything like that tells me the symptom. So it confirms that, hey, you have pain, and I hear you, I feel you, but it doesn't tell me what the root cause is. And without, without addressing you as a whole, I can't tell you what the root cause is. So again, going into something that's going to help you increase awareness of your entire body is going to help. Yeah. Join the challenge. Join the challenge. Join the challenge. Oh. Okay. 
Don't stop sharing. Thanks. Yay! How do you overcome a hip impingement? That's amazing. Join the challenge. That's amazing. Okay, we're gonna sign off. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks for the questions. Hopefully we'll see you in the challenge. Yay, 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 yay. Mwah.